Hello, 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 and welcome to the show at Wrestling with Entertainment. Bringing you the exclusive breaking news, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday, and interviewing all of your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube and Castbox. Sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. I am, of course, your host, a that guy, James Jane. Alongside the leader of Squash Squad, I think, I believe he's 5-0 and all at this point, Kalikuyas. I mean, why would I miss going back in 95? I mean, Dunkaroos, British Knights, LA Gear Lightups, What Would You Do, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Shall I Continue? <laughs> and the Americans stood at us. Go, Brooklyn Jews! And... It's a great day for wrestling. Um, I, of course, uh, happy uh, Happy New Year! If you're joining us on uh, New Year's Eve, I'm so sorry. Um, you know that's just the way it is. But uh, we're here to entertain you, and we are of course wrestling with the WWE 1995 Royal Rumble. Um, this event took place um, January 22nd, 1995. Uh, it came from Tampa Bay, Florida in the USF Sundome. Um, and the attendance was 10,000. Um, now we're going to get out our VHSs, get our DVD players. Um, Pull out DVD was now 95, sir. Pull, pull up, put up the uh, WWE Network. La- laser discs. Yeah, laser disc and Divix. Oh my god, Divix. Divix was and, and, fucking and, big. And uh, real audio. <laughs> I know, right? Divix. Oh god. I used to have a Divix player. Oh. Or more actively, just go to YouTube. Uh, the match is uh, on the legally from WWE. Um, you can find that link in the description of the video below, uh, but on YouTube or Castbox. Or if you want to be like a roguish type, just type in uh, Royal Rumble '95 and it will come up. Um, you want to go to uh, zero dot zero zero, and when I say uh. When I say three, you press start. Are you ready? No, I said, are you ready? And three. No, no. And one, (laughs) two, three. And here we go. The late great uh, Howard Finkel, which you Uh, know. Oh, yeah, I forgot Baywatch. See, James, you know, back in the day, we yeah. actually had shows that were on TV that were really popular. And this chick was, like, popular for that show, but also because of a alleged sex tape that popped out. Well, so I mean, she was the, I mean, she was I mean, the page I mean, of her time. I mean, the, <laughs> the, second, uh, the 1995 version of Mandy Rose right here. Uh... We're right now we're seeing entrance one, two, and three enter the ring. Of course, I'm referring to Pamela Anderson uh, and her and rack. the jugs. Yep. Well, actually, at this time they weren't that bad. They weren't like Dolly Parton. Big, big. The, 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 this was right in the the beginning of the Pamela Anderson. No, I'm not Pamela Anderson. I'm Jenny McCarthy feud. Oh my God, Jenny McCarthy. There used to be a show on MTV that was, uh, what was it called? It was Singled Out. Singled Out. And oh my gosh, she was and, off the wall. And then they and then they switched from uh, Jenny McCarthy to to Carmen Electra. But I, I, I saw Singled Out before I ever knew Jenny McCarthy did Playboy. And then I really liked Jenny McCarthy. Right, Jenny McCarthy, exactly. <laughs> Because yeah, she, this... she, she did the Christmas uh, issue of uh, the the previous December 94, actually, I believe. Oh, yeah. 
And at this time, uh, I think the winner of the Royal Rumble was going to have her have her as the valet. Yes. Yeah. For uh, Mania. That was the stipulation. That was this is the all- real winner of the Royal Rumble got Pamela Anderson, not the WrestleMania uh, main event. Yeah, this this was also one of the first. Uh, this would be the beginning of uh, three rumbles in a row that would not end with the rumble itself. Wait, did did did, did Bretton Diesel, uh, Bretton Undertaker go on before this? Uh, yeah. It was this so. ninety five. It was Bret Diesel. <laughs> Um, no, 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 Rick Diesel came after, was on after this. No, the, this was the main event. This was the main event. Yeah, yeah because, you know, Diesel, because the storyline in Mania fast That's forward right. was yeah. Diesel getting uh, Jenny. No, Diesel got Pam, and Michael's got Jenny. Oh, you know what I meant. Yeah. Dude, I'm... I'm my 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 brain is still fried from jumping out of the DeGloria. Give me one second here. You're just saying that um this wasn't <clears throat> Sean Michaels wasn't your guy in ninety five. Yeah, we were talking about that. Ninety five shot I mean, this is ten year old me. Ten year old me didn't like for it, but twelve year old me realized, man, this dude was doing all this dumb shit and, he, and backstage yeah. and he still was performing? Okay, I gotta give him props. Now, you, ha- you have to remember at, 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 at this point, you know, Bulldog didn't return to the WWE until August 94. Um, and you got you gotta realize something here is that on the I believe it was the last Saturday night's main event okay. ever. Okay. The last Saturday night's main event before they ever, um, before they uh, relaunched it. It was Brit- It was the British Bulldog Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental Championship. Mm-hmm. Shawn Michaels pinned Bulldog after blocking a superplex. A superplex, yep. Yeah. And then and then Bulldog was gone, and went to WCW to. Fail miserably. Um, I forget that but with that jump start from Shawn Michaels, I was like, oh, isn't he the good guy in this? But then I remember he doesn't be turn face until after Mania. The night after Ma- the literally the night after Mania. After Mania, right. yep. And so that was when um, Owen Hart, I want to say it was like the Owen Hart, Yokozuna. Kind of like the friend of the friend type deal. Yeah. All right. right. Berserker 2. Berserker 2. Us. Us. Yes. I'm pretty sure that was the same exact shirt that the Berserker wore. It's a nice shirt. Honestly, I'm trying to think. Was this like the first Rumble where number one act? At, well, number one and two actually were the workhorse, like where they actually had the formula of a general yes, running the whole rumble yes, and being in that final four to kind of keep things flowing. Yeah, it, 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 it would be, it would nearly repeat itself in 2006. I think it did repeat itself in 2006, where one and two were at least the final three. Yeah. I don't think Randy was... Final th- was what was two. Triple H was two. And you ain't seen ninety five until you see Duke the Dumpster Josie. I mean, if he was a trash man in New York, why would he leave to be a wrestler? They make pretty good wages, uh, <laughs> and they're unionized. You know what I'm saying? They the tripping. You, me, and Scooter was talking about that they've never done every. Person in the ring in a Royal Rumble. Everybody, nobody gets eliminated until after number thirty. I feel like uh, the yeah. only time that would actually happen was this actual Royal Rumble. I mean, this is the closest one to it because it was every minute. Right. <laughs> it's like literally a sixty-second shot clock, but it. And I get it because it was like trying to 
get the people into it, you know, the countdown. Because back then, they really wasn't into the countdown as it used to be. And there's my man, Jiccolo, Jimmy Del Rey. Hey, that's my guy right there. Make the ladies scream, son. But, I mean, say who everybody that comes out is just so people could say, Who the fuck is this? <laughs> dude, me and me and Scooter literally lived it, so we kind of got <laughs> I, 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 I but remember if there's two through a, through a furry screen. Oh my a, god, because yes. this, was, this was about the time where my free, my free wrestling pay-per-view day started to end. Oh, yeah. Because back then, you used to be able to uh, yeah, yeah. rig the cable box, yeah, yeah. but then if you couldn't rig the cable box, it was the squiggly line. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it used to be if somebody uh, in any of the... Because my, my apartment building is uh, part of a, a three-section complex with nine apartments each with a connecting rooftop. So there's technically 27 apartments. You have three apartments for floor, three per separate section. And if anybody in any of the apartments had ordered the pay-per-view, we all got it. Why did they do my boy like that, man? I guess he got more tips to make at the end of the night. But, oh, well, that was my guy. You had to been there to watch him do like strut his stuff. <laughs> Somebody else has been bumping like crazy in this match. Well, that that's what that's what that's what ninety five Sean did. Yeah, ninety five. I would say ninety three to ninety six. He was like on one, and, like, like with the matches. Like the, 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 this was the click. This was the click starting to. Oh my! Oh God! I thought that was Marty Jannetty for a second. It's Tom Pritchard. No, it's Tom Pritchard. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I Tom Pritchard. And for those who don't know, Tom Pritchard, Bruce Pritchard's brother, who actually trained Kurt uh, Angle, which is funny. So, so he's brother, brother love, brother of brother love. But in his long hair gigolo days, <laughs> and before he became Zip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. See. He currently has a school in uh, Knox, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, that he runs with Kane. Um, fun fact: we interviewed one of his uh, trainees in uh, Billy Tipton. I'm just trying to figure out how Kane got time to be the mayor of a city and run wrestling school. <laughs> so he runs the cut. He runs the. Oh, we got big strike and little strike. Oh. Oh, and Doink and Dink. Now, yeah. Doink, man, when he was dark, it was crazy. Yes. Like, I think people like Dark Doink more than Friendly Doink. Yes. Is this, uh, dark Doink was a motherfucker. This is Ray Apollo. Ray Apollo. Phil Apollo. Oh, yeah. Phil Apollo. Phil Apollo. It's Ray Apollo. Uh, this is not Matt Bourne, who around this time was doing the Half Doink gimmick. In ECW as Born Again. Um, but, you know, after this, Doink would, you know, would become essentially jobber fodder. And, Pretty much. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't really see Doink. He would make the odd appearance now again, but then his last appearance before, you know, his, you know, Slight revival in two thousand one, uh, was um, was that Quang? Was that the or sl- Quang? Quang. Quang. Uh, it was Quang. Doink's last appearance was at the sl- ninety seven Slammies, which is bad because I could think of. Wait a minute, let's see. Best wrestlers, most memorable mask wrestlers in the nineties. You would think mankind. T- Kane yeah, but, but, and but, Doink. Well, Doink was Doink. Doink didn't really re- Doink didn't wrestle in '97. He didn't have he didn't have one match on uh, on WWE uh, television. Uh, he didn't have anything in, in almost anything in '96 either. Uh, but for some reason, he was there 
at like the 97 Slammies, I think it became a running joke, spot Doink. And if, for those who don't remember, Doink get, ended up getting thrown out of the Slammies after picking a fight with Steve Austin, Rick Martel. Now, this would be Rick Martel's last WWE in-ring appearance for quite some time. Uh, he was supposed to return uh, during the Attitude Era. Uh, they wanted him to be part of a new tag team called the Supermodels. And guess who was supposed to be their manager? Shall we? Don Callis. Oh, the Jackal. Don Callis. They, they were they were going to bring someone in to be this character Raphael. It was like a hair. Not like the tur- not, that. not like the not like the turtles, right? No, there was no. a tag team in the WWE that was the turtles. No, no, that was the WCW, the Toxic Turtles, <clears throat> or, or was that GWF? Or was that USWA? Uh, no, they right. had a WWE with the turtles. Dark match, but yeah, he's there. And there's my guy, Owen Hart. And what happens, Brett? Being a motherfucker. <laughs> Selfish motherfucker right there, man. So See how that is? I think this is also the first rumble where a motherfucker gets attacked before they even get to the room. <laughs> like, yeah. Would be the last well, one. Like, just mm. did him dirty. <clears throat> no, no, I think um uh, no and um ninety four they used it as an excuse to skip over somebody. I, I, th- I think it was Bastion Booger. I don't think anybody capitalized I mean, on that more than um, Curtis Axel. I think so. yeah, yeah, technically he's still in the Rumble. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Never never got eliminated. And I mean, oh my god. Too many. <laughs> god, every- no, that. God, Bob Holly. No, that's Timothy Well. Well done, baby. Oh my God, that's Timothy Well. <laughs> you, you, you could you could not pick. Did Earl have? Oh my pick? God! Oh, Tell me you didn't see that. He I hit the turnbuckle. Yes, yes. And yes, did er, yes. Earl Hebner take a bump too? And that was done. <laughs> and done. Rick Martel and Tom Pritchard. It was just weird because it was so in a minute, so everyone's like just getting thrown out. Like, but all I know is Tim- Timothy like Well got day. his money's worth. You know, it's a sad situation when Doink is probably one of the bigger names in your world. Oh, and there you go. In your world. And Quang. No, I mean, no, because you got to think, Doink, you weren't there, but. When Doink first popped out, he was like the Joker. He could have been like Joker-ish level. No, but I mean and, this one right here in '95. I mean, I mean, Shawn Michaels is the biggest name in the British Bulldog. Oh, and there goes the, and the Bushwhacker that uh, just got his ass tossed over. I could think the ultimate Matt Bourne of uh, Doink could have made it like <clears throat> WrestleMania. Mm, 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 yeah, no. Nah. No. That wasn't going to happen. No, I mean... When he jumped in, there was this thing called Yokozuna that was just I mean, rolling yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, I mean, interestingly, and a, a, a Hulk Hogan joint feud in 93 might have been interesting if Yokozuna was not there. Yeah. But at that time, Yokozuna was so... Dominant. I mean, I I, I, I could see. Put the belt on him, but I definitely see that he could have won for a for the world championship, and maybe people wouldn't uh, question it. Especially but it would have had to have been against it. Would, but you got to think in '93, it would have been Brett, and and, and Doink had had WrestleMania. People forget WrestleMania Nine was Doink's first pay per view. Exactly. So my thing was, it would have had to have been ten, which means it would have been Diesel. And, and then, and then, and and by ninety four, they were teaming him with a midget because they turned him face. Face, N- exactly. Now, 
Now, you might not be able to get a actual, you know, uh, title reign out of him. I, I believe you could have gotten a, um, if, if Hogan had stayed around for SummerSlam, you could have done Brett and Lawler, and you could have done Hogan and Doink. Could have. But I feel like Doink wouldn't have been a person that would win their way into it. I think he would have had to trick his way into a title match. No? Well, that's like, kind of like, like low-key threat. Well, that, that, that's why so many people would dress up as Doink in the late 2000s, uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s. If we ever get that What If series off the ground, what? how about What If? Doink the Clown won the WWE Championship. Oh, it would have had to been 95, where all this shit was Helter Skelter anyway. I mean... <laughs> For real. Like, well, I, 95 was like, Jeff Jarrett... Jeff Jarrett hasn't even popped up yet. And Doink was feuding with Jeff Jarrett. Exactly. In, 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 and, there goes, and there goes Mo. Mo. Hi, hi, Mo. Bye, Mo. Mo that was, was quick. Mo, Mo was there for a Mo. Mint. Get it. Get it. Not even. Yep. Half a Mo. Yeah. And that was the fastest elimination. I don't yeah. care what nobody said. <laughs> Fuck. Because <laughs> he came in like hell. It just. I, <laughs> I had friends who actually worked with King Kong Bundy on the Independence. And they said he he was the most stubborn person to work with ever. He would not bump for anybody. Um, look well, at him. He looks like, like a... And, and he, he, he wrestled a friend of mine who was wrestling as the, the new, new Dynamite Kid. And he ended up, he ended up screwing <clears throat> uh, himself out of a... Uh, uh, you know, uh, the career he screwed uh, injured uh, the guy and not God ninety five Mabel Mabel's still a face here who would go on to be a heel and actually get a title shot. <laughs> who, 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 who could forget King Mabel? God, I I remember I remember my. My uncle actually ordering the pay per view for SummerSlam '95. He'd be like, "Ooh, Diesel King Mabel." <laughs> I, I think I think it's the only time the King of the Ring winner actually went to SummerSlam and got a title match. Got the title no, shot because. It... Oh yeah, that's right. Lesnar did. <clears throat> I mean, most of the Maples. But you got to think, he won in 95, Austin won at 96, and he still didn't get it. And Butch, oh my God, Butch. Oh, Butch. And Bundy's, Bundy's out. I know you said nobody wanted to bump for, but uh, Bundy didn't want to bump for anybody, but I feel like Bundy barely bumped in this match. Barely, ba Bundy barely bumped ever. <laughs> Look at that, man. Shawn Michaels, now think about that. Like, the most eliminations in this match at this point is... In, in six months after this, the, the British Bulldog would turn heel right alongside <clears throat> Mabel. Yep, and you remember when he was supposed to be with uh, Lex Luger with the, uh, the international... Allied. The Allied Powers? Uh, I believe the... Speak of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make that shit up, boy. I think uh, and Luger I powers come out of this. I think yes. Oh my god. They wrestled they up, boy. all in that mania that year. Uh, no, they wrestled the Blue Bloods in the yeah. opening match of WrestleMania 11. WrestleMania 11, which was 95. That was the yeah. debut of the... That, that was supposed to be their debut, and then Luger ends up going to WCW. <laughs> well, I mean, look at it this way. He main evented WrestleMania 10, and then he was the first match on the card at WrestleMania 11 in a tag team match. Well, because, because well, that, that 
Because when he first came in, he was the narcissist, and and it didn't work. Then they tried to make him Hogan 2.0, didn't work. See, also people forget about Luger's involvement in 92, where Luger was supposed to... Luger was... Luger was on TV. Uh, Luger was on TV d- during WrestleMania 8. They did an interview with him at WrestleMania 8. And I remember watching the tape of it when I was going through my... Uh, my friend was giving me all the, the WrestleMania tapes in order, and then holy shit, it's Luger. It, it, because you know, the World Bodybuilding Federation was... That's right. Um, up, yeah. And, and, and then... Luger, I'm not sure if his motorcycle accident happened after this, or after uh, WrestleMania 8, or before, but the possibility of Luger coming in in 92 as a heel to... Oh my god. To, to, for, for, a sta- for a stable alongside Ric Flair and Kurt Hennig <clears throat> against you know, against you know, Hogan, the Warrior. You know, better not say Macho Man. Um, I mean, you would you would have oh you would have to you would have to have you would have to have Savage in there. All I know is I see this Portuguese kid getting his ass rocked. Worse than how Portugal got rocked in the uh, World Cup this year. Anywho. My name is Aldo Montoya. You killed my push. Prepare to die. Aldo Montoya. A.K.A. P.J. Walker. A.K.A. Just Incredible. Yep. Which is crazy. Which is... See, what a lot of people don't don't remember is while the while uh, one to three kid beat Razor Ramon in the first jobber upset in you know in Monday Night Wrestling history people forget that a few months later PJ Walker who was making them hands as a jobber did the same thing with Erwin R. Scheister. I could also make the argument uh IRS wasn't as big of a star as Razor Ramon. I mean but yeah I mean I never trust a guy that doesn't have theme music. Yeah, true. I mean, I, he, just, I mean, he, he, he went, used to just walk out and tell motherfuckers to do their. <laughs> he went from having he went from having a calculator <clears throat> to nothing, like a typewriter and calculator to nothing. True that. Also, with Henry Godwin being in, um, slop drop favorite favorite finisher name slop drop. Oh, scissor me, daddy ass. <laughs> This is young daddy ass, uh, gun smoke daddy ass. I was gonna say this is uh, the smoking gun. Tombstone, tombstone daddy. No, this is the butt before it became ass. <laughs> butt evolves into ass. Oh yes, Billy Gun. But yeah, man, this is. Bring it back some memory, boy. <clears throat> if you had told me in 95, Manitar would have lasted longer than Mo, Ma- he would have Man- been smoking crack. <laughs> well, it's good because there's no one named Manitar. It's Mantor. Mantar, Manitar. He lasted longer than Mo, Butch, I be- Luke. I believe. Fucking this- Doink. <laughs> well, that- this, this might be one of the rumbles where <clears throat> at least a third are dead. Doink. That is true. Uh, Bundy. Bundy. Mabel. Mabel. Bulldog. Owen. Bulldog. Owen. Goblin's still kicking, right? Yes. Yeah, the goblin's all right. Thank Good. I know Backlund's still kicking. I know the guns are still kicking. 
atom bomb. No, 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 no. Brian Clark is Brian Clark is still alive. Thank God. All right, I was... it's Crush that's dead. It's Brian. Yeah, Adam. Crush. Okay, Crush. Yeah. I'm like speak of this. Whatever. Speak of bomb. Because I, I I remember on an episode of <clears throat> WWF Mania, which was the 10 a.m. Saturday morning show. The WWE oh, show yes. that was hosted by Todd Pettengill. Todd Pettengill, yes. And it, it was the first time they had announced that a wrestler... They, it's the first time they mentioned a wrestler's real name, and they mentioned that he had gotten in trouble with the law and had been released. That's and they said... Everybody is, uh, uh, his real name was Brian Adams. I'm like, whoa! He's saying the summer of 69? <laughs> <laughs> now, Bret Hart going after Backlund, so let's just start this right now. 95 was the start of belligerent Bret Hart. <laughs> belligerent Bret battling belligerent Bob. <laughs> yes. I don't match this that well, a part of the show. Uh, Marty Trinetti again. Um, start- <laughs> Marty Trinetti 4.0. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett defeated Razor Ramon uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Undertaker defeated IRS. Um, Diesel uh, fought Bret Hart to a draw. Uh, the one, two, three kid and Bob Holly defeated Dan Dan Bigelow and Tatanka. Tatanka for the tag titles. And the next the night, on, the next night on Raw, the Smoking Guns would win them back. Yes. See, look at belligerent Brett. So this was Brett beating on Owen, beating on Backlund. He hasn't even gotten to the screwed part yet. So this is like the seed getting planted. He was screwed because Backlund won the title from him, and it was because of Owen throwing in the towel for him. No, 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 no. It was the Owen mother. The yeah, mother. Helen to throw it in. Helen threw the towel in. Owen just instigated his mom. Dick Murdoch. Dick Murdoch. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's, here's a situation I want you to think about. What, what if it wasn't Bob Backlund that had that monster legend push? Back in '93, what if it was Bruno San Martino? Yeah, I know. Ooh. I know. He, I know. We couldn't <clears throat> wrestle anymore at the time, but just uh, just imagine if you had a, you know, a, a, a hump like San Martino, and he suddenly just decides to go nuts. Of course, this was at a time where San Martino hated Vince McMahon with a. Pack. But that would have been that would have been like prehistoric Hogan NWO ish type shit. Because Backlund was a champion, but Backlund was a champion that really wasn't that popular. I mean, in the in the eighties. I mean, that's because Backlund Backlund was Backlund had a two two years as champion. Mm-hmm. Yep. Two GD years. How? How anybody? Like, yeah. I mean, and and how they ever convinced him to go nuts like that and be a heel? I mean, technically, Backlund is the precursor for Hogan. I don't think they needed to. Uh, they needed to convince him. I think he was, uh, he had a little bit of that in him already. Oh, are you trying to say he was already there? Yeah. He been lost it. Oh my god, this was oh Fatu. Look at look how fit Fatu was back in ninety five. And like in two years he let it go. Talk about that. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, technically, it'd be four years. I mean, um, a year from now, he, he would become uh, what? Uh, Muslim and become the Sultan. He would. Uh, no, he would be. You know, thought to the 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 guy from the from the streets of San Diego. Yep. And he. And would, then he, he would. Be, he, would, 
he would be the one who eliminated uh, Austin from the WrestleMania, uh, from the Rumble a year later. In which Austin hopped up. He just ripped back under the ring like he never got eliminated. That was the best. That was the best one. Oh. That was the best, like, fuck you up. Fuck you up doing this. <laughs> like, the refs, no refs saw it. Oh, crash. This and I believe Crush is 30. Yes, he is. Crush is 30. This is it. Crush but is 30. Cr- and he's also 30 in this match. Remember when Crush was supposed to be Hogan in 93? The Hawaiian pineapple crush. Well, I mean, he the- was over, just over in Hawaii and nowhere else. I, I, mean, <laughs> Hawa- I mean, you had Hollywood Hogan. Why not Hawaiian Hogan? Uh, Hawaiian Hogan. Aloha, brother. No, I cannot know. He said Hawaiian Hogan. He didn't say. <laughs> and the cameraman hoping for uh, Pam to uh, basic instinct. Oh yeah. Poor, poor. The, the, poor. the members of Chronic fighting each other. Mm. <clears throat> I re- I remember when there was big talk of uh, around 2001 of Adam Bomb being brought back in under his real name Brian Clark and being given a monster push to the title. Mm. I could never see that happening in 2001 like, considering like, what monster Triple H had, had popped back in the picture from the eight I, I mean torn, yeah. I mean I mean, it, it, I mean, I I was even hearing rumors that you know it would have been, uh, it, it could have even been you know Austin against Brian Clark at Backlash that year. In two thousand, yeah. uh, um, was it taken back later? We're talking about two thousand one, right? Yes. But keep keep in mind at this time, well, he went from Hawaiian to ninja to a biker gang. Like he 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 was like the white Kama, like how Kama went from Papa Shango to Kama to the Godfather. Well, the to, to, with well to, and to, uh, and don't forget, uh, he was Sir Charles before anything. See. But you Dick know, Murdoch, look at that. Dick deal, Murdoch though. lasted Dick Murdoch lasted longer than Mo. Everybody lasted longer than Mo. Dick Murdoch lasted longer than Jimmy Del Rey. I, <laughs> Rick Martel. Timothy Well, who I mean I mean he got spearheaded, I can't. I mean, who who <laughs> did, who who didn't want to see you know Dick Murdoch versus Diesel at WrestleMania eleven? <laughs> I mean, it'll be two D's fighting for double D's. Would have been nice. No, everybody makes a big deal. Oh, Shawn Michaels won this match at number one. He went through hell. Because watching the match, it's not as impressive as you might think. <laughs> That's why that's why memory fades, but the winners stay forever, sir. The details fade, but the winner is 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 an forever. Hey, no one cares about the high. Fixing scars, glory oh. lasts forever. Bye bye bye. Oh yeah, the sandlot. Yeah, something you don't no, know nothing no, about, Jack. <laughs> no, that's the replacements. God damn it. You know what I mean. Line is kicking in anyway. I mean, I'm really surprised they didn't rename Crush Keanu. 
Nah. Oh, Barbarian's gone. No, Fatu. 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 They both have the same trunks. Henry Guy was still in there. Because they were the head shrinkers. Mr. Slop dropped. And, 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 it was Cio- and he, he was Sione. Sione. That's what it was. Sione. And look at Shawn Michaels, boy. Friggin', oh. friggin' Dick Murdoch is, I think, Workhorse right now. I think the, the, per, the, the wrestler from the pre, oh from the WWF days to have lasted the longest in a Royal Rumble. That is true. Pretty impressive, I must say. That's why I said he lasted longer than... With his feet not touching the ground, I do say that's more impressive than what Shawn Michaels did. Considering the size of... What? I mean, How dare you? If, if you could land... I always wondered, if you could land on the floor and land on your stomach and just have your knees up... Well, I like, it, did that. Well, I'm pretty sure Co- I'm pretty sure Kofi was somewhere trying that. Co- Co- Kofi, Kofi, <laughs> you like use like literally <clears throat> pancakes. Yes. In fact, to keep they, from they, touching the floor. Yeah. Kofi's done everything. Although I think the best one was when um, he screwed up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. His best one was the barricade hopping from the barricade. And then when, to me, when Adam Rose, when old boy tossed him, when Rusev tossed him, but the, but Adam Rose's posse caught him in the, like, like a like a people carry. That was fun. That was funny. It's like it was that, like with uh, Dalton Castle, uh, during the Diamond Battle, Diamond Battle Royal. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just love I love that stuff. But I think you're the only person that remembers the Dalton Castle one there. I, I mean, it was only last month. Month? Yeah, I mean, it was a month ago. <laughs> I already left it on my memory. Dude, trust me, that's nothing. You, we have to block ninety three to ninety five out of our memory. God, I, I remember when, you know, I met Lou Albano. Uh. And in what I, what I think was either an AWF show or a UWF show, because I remember meeting, I don't know if you've seen the uh, Dark Side of the Ring, uh, Herb Abrams, but on that show I met Lou Albano and I met Sunny Beach. Mm. And Sunny, Sunny Beach came out of the men's locker room with a friggin' towel on. I'm like five years old. This is in Staten Island, by the way. And who else was on the... Uh, Greg Valentine was on the card. Greg Valentine. Man, that dude. My, my, my aunt's brother was uh, uh, the coach of the, uh, the football team of the high school where they did this show. That was a... Greg the Hammer Valentine. Dude, he was he was a beast. So I think was he, did he show up in ninety six? I believe he did. I I because I mean, he was he was in ninety three for some reason. <clears throat> I mean, then again, so was Carlos Colon. Yes. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, I remember this crush. Look at crush rate. The toss is the last. And nope. And then nope. Good little sport, though. But you know what's crazy, though? I think, what was it? Sean in 90... It's crazy, because Sean won in 95, 90... He won 96. He won 95 and 96. And he... And and Austin won 97, 98, which... And H- Hogan won ninety ninety one, which is the crazy, the only like repeat Rumble winners, which is crazy. 
But Austin had the best. He won like three in like five years or something like that. It's just two bananas. Fucking bananas. Because he won, what, 96? Nine, no, 97, 98. And, and 2001. And 2001. Yeah. Which was freaking nuts. That's crazy. I mean, there would have been an option for uh, 2000, but he was out with the neck injury. Here we go. Here we go. Look at that. And the only now watch. thing you'll ever remember from this Royal Rumble <laughs> is this. Yes. Because it was the best turn ever. Ten year old me was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. Ten year old me was like, uh, hold the fuck up. <laughs> because at this time Ten year old me was like that black man in that gold blazer in the front row. <laughs> yeah. Because this was a time where there really wasn't an obvious there really weren't obvious winners. True. I mean we we never thought that my that Michaels would have to fight his way to Diesel. Considering their tur their uh their breakup only happened in November. Mm-hmm. If you ask me, they should have done In Your House in February of this year and done a blow-off to Bulldog HBK. At Mania. No, do do a Bulldog Shawn Michaels blow-off match in February, which honestly I think they did, now that I think about it. Um... Look at that! Look at that! I I I I believe they did do a bulldog uh, HBK match between this time and Mania Eleven, but then once Bulldog turned heel and Sean turned face, Bulldog was uh, Sean's real first challenger, first feud. But this was like you know. Sean had, uh, you know, I mean, Sean did defend against, you know, Diesel, but that was Diesel's last match, so. Pretty much. Eat your heart out, girls. Hands off the merchandise. But 10 year old me was like, what the fuck? God, and, and, and Sean Michaels almost. Ended up uh, winning in 2007. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They teased him trying to win in 03, I believe. But Jer- that was to set up the Jericho feud. And obviously, um, uh, okay. Rock went to go on to win that, um, that one. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, 2002, obvious. 2003, obvious. 2004 was obvious. 2005, he had two obvious choices. 2000, 2006 was the year people started going, what? No, they said, they said doing what in 2002, I believe. Oh, say what if you sleep with your sister? I have a sister. So, who won? Oh, 2006 was obvious because of Rey Mysterio. When, I would not say Rey Mysterio was obvious. Well, I mean, when he came out in the car with the two bands and was dedicated the match to Eddie Guerrero. I mean, you kind of knew where that was heading. See, that should have been a what if, if what if Chavo was the person that was doing all that for Eddie instead of Ray. Well, I mean, he... Because I'm 
because what the, what they were trying to lead to, what they wanted to do for 2006 was Eddie and Batista. That's not what I hear. What I heard was that they were going the route of Eddie and Shawn Michaels at uh, Mania. And when, you know, obviously he passed, they swore to uh, Shawn Michaels and McMahon. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I think that's what I that's what I heard anyway, was that it was gonna be Michael and Hello. But I think that was when it was all long term. I mean they don't do shit long term nowadays. In WWE anyway. I mean that's what right now Except for the blood matches. Except for the bloodline. Bloodline is the only thing long term. <laughs> and but that's the the only reason for that is because they can't think of anything else. <laughs> But yep, yeah, uh, that will conclude uh, this watch along. Uh, thank you so much for watching and a uh, happy New Year's. Uh, join us uh, this Tuesday as we interview um, DJ High. Uh, and we've got another incredible interview coming up uh, this Wednesday as well. Um, if you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, but on YouTube and Castbox. Of course, this was sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play Along Coffee. Um, follow the show at Wrestling with E, but on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and a hell of a lot more. Um, you can follow me personally at James J993. Where can we find Kaliko? At I am Coleco. You feel it? That new year, new mania, heading to LA, baby. And where can we find Scooter? As always, find me on Twitter at Scooter Dust. Find me, James, and Ryan Dust hosting the potentially final. Remix on YouTube, the premier audio companion experience for all your premium live event alternate commentary WWE needs. I have, I'm saying so many words at once. Uh, and of course, revel in my Dungeons and Drag Dungeons and Dragons antics along with Rico Constantino Jr. and the rest of the Smoking Dragons Clan Twitch TV backslash Smoking Dragons. New episodes premiere live on Twitch every Saturday night, available next day on YouTube. For oh, Calico Yachts and Scooter Dust, I'm James J. Wishing you a Happy New Year from Wrestling With Entertainment. Hey guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and TheWrestleLife.com, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.